Hi everyone, let's begin. There is a one important aspect that is raised by a number of research scholars where we are going to use PLSM and how we can use these results of PLSM, how we have to report, how we have to interpret these PLSM results. So this paper has been published in 2019. It was received, revised and accepted. You can see here on 1st December 2018. And uh, everybody is aware about this F -F here. And uh, we usually follow uh, all those PLSM and CVSM by Professor Hare's book. And we are aware all these co-authors also. And uh, now we will discuss if suppose we you would like to know where we have to use or when to use and how to report these results of PLSM. So this is uh, well explained. Uh, the most important and crucial part of this paper, I just want to show you that is the last one, this table. I'm giving you this paper link also in my description box so you can download this paper. Otherwise, it is freely available on Google Scholar. You can see here, I just want to show this table. This is the most important table like reflective measurement model. What should be the values? What is the meaning of these values? Right. If whether we should accept or we should reject. Convergent, what is convergent validity? Discriminant validity. What should be the values of the convergent validity? Formative measurement models and reflective model and each and everything that is given here. R square value, Q square value. So what, let me start this paper. After that, uh, I'm going to explain you what is the content of this paper. Uh, basically, uh, here is overview of the consideration and matrix required for partially square structural equation modeling, PLSM. Analysis and result reporting. Preliminary consideration are summarized first in this paper, including reasons for choosing PLSM. Recommended sample size in selected context and distribution assumptions, use of secondary data, statistical power, and the need for goodness of fit testing. As well as you can see here, PLSM results are covered and PLS predict, that is a novel approach for assessing a model out of sample prediction metrics for model comparison and several complementary methods for checking the results robustness. We come to the, this the paper is uh, have uh, what kind of design methodology and approach. Overview of previously and recently proposed metrics as well as the rules of thumb for evaluating the research result based on application of PLSM findings. PLSM results are still relevant and scholars need to be knowledgeable about recently proposed metrics. As well as here is you can see this part is that is the introduction. Uh, very frequently uh, until around 2010, people they were working on CVSAM. Right? CVSAM means covariance based structural equation modeling. But later on, what happened, they had start using PLS partial least square structure equation modeling. And instead, there is, you can see in recent years, PLSM is now widely applied in many social science disciplines, including organizational management, international management, human resource management, management information system, operations management, marketing management, supply chain management, and so on. And uh, here is PLSM method is very appealing to many researchers as it enables them to estimate complex models with many constructs, indicators, variables, and structural path without imposing distributional assumptions on the data. As well as PLSM is a causal predictive approach to SEM that emphasizes prediction in estimating statistical model whose structures are designed to provide causal explanations. Here is Additionally, user-friendly software packages are available that generally require 
little technical knowledge about the method such as PLS graph and smart PLS. As well as here is you can say in the environment R like statistical computing software environment like R can also execute PLS SAM. We can apply SAM using R also, right? In R software. And uh, here is, you can see in this uh, particular paper, PLS predict a new method for assessing a model out of sample predictive power, which researchers should routinely apply, especially when drawing conclusion and affect business practices and have managerial implications. Next, we come to the, this is the preliminary consideration. You can see here, it's 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 a well written here. Figure one illustrates the various aspects that we, that authors are discussing in the following section. Like preliminary consideration, sample size, statistical power, and goodness of it, then measurement model assessment, reflective loading, Cronbeck alpha, composite reliability, AV, HTMT, formative redundancy analysis, VIF and all these things. What is VIF? I had already uploaded so many videos. You can see on VIF, right? What should be the VIF value? What should be their references, right? Who had given this particular point? And explanatory power and out of sample predictive power, R square, Q square, PLS predict each and everything that is available. Non-linearity, endogeneity, heterogeneity, right? Then we come to the, the this is the preliminary considerations, right? After that, you will find in this, in this, in this paper, like CV SAM, which is often executed by software package Lesril also, or EMOS. That's up to you in which particular software you are feeling most comfortable, then you can use that particular software. In contrast, PLS SAM is referred to as variance based as it accounts for the total variance and uses the total variance to estimate parameters. Next, we come to the here is the with the choices between the two SAM methods, researchers should select PLS SAM when the analysis. I mean, in, in, in what situation we are going to use PLS SAM when the analysis is concerned with testing a theoretical framework from a prediction perspective. When the structural model is complex and includes many constructs, indicators, and or model relationships. When the research objective is to better understand increasing complexity by exploring theoretical extension of establishing theories, exploratory research for theory development. One or more formatively measured constructs and research consists of financial ratios or similar types of data artifacts. Then the research based on secondary archival data, which may lack a comprehensive substantial on the grounds of the measurement theory. Small population restricts the sample size, example, business to business research, but PLSM also works very well with large sample size. So distribution issues are a concern such as lack of normality, when research requires latent variable scores for follow-up analysis, then we come to the, there is the properly defined what should be your sample size. And uh, PLSM that provides solution when methods such as CVSAM develop inadmissible result or do not converge with complex model and small sample size regardless of whether the data originates from the common or composite model population. Here is, you can see PLS SAM is not capable of turning a poor sample into a proper one to obtain valid model estimation like other multivariate methods. And as well as you can see here properly, um, there's the to determine required sample size, researchers should rely on power analysis that consider the model structure, the anticipated significant level and expected effect sizes. As well as you can see here, uh, distributional assumptions also well defined. Many scholars indicate that absence of distributional assumptions is the main reason for choosing PLS SAM. When it is not available, then we are moving towards the PLS SAM. And uh, as well as uh, uh, that is written well defined here, secondary data. 
and uh, increasingly availability to explore the real world phenomena secondary data is easily available and here is you can see which is strictly confirmatory in nature cvsam we are talking about cvsam but more precisely secondary data are mainly used in exploratory research to propose causal relationship in situation which have little clearly defined theory so plsm uses limited information making the method more robust and not constrained by the requirement of cvsam here is next we come to the plsm also proves valuable for analyzing secondary data from measurement theory perspective then we come to the here is statistical part uh, plsm researchers benefit from methods high degree of statistical power compared to cvsam greater statistical power means that plsm is more likely to identify relationship as significant when they are indeed present in the population as well as we come to the goodness of fit goodness of fit uh, here is the cbsm is strongly relies on the concept of model fit that this is much less the case with plsm but when we talk about a couple of methodologists have endorsed model fit measurement for plsm but researchers should be very cautious when considers the applicability of those measures for plsm next we come to the uh, evaluation of partial least square structure equation modeling result i mean pls results that is also relevant criteria differ for reflective and formative constructs because as i had already explained you in my old videos previous videos what is the difference between reflective and formative model and uh, how they are distinguishing with each other so please refer that video here is rule of thumb by their very nature are broad guidelines that suggest how to interpret the results and they typically very depending on the context like for example it's written here well explained reliability for exploratory research should be a minimum of 0.60 otherwise we are not going to accept it while reliability for research that depends on established measures should be 0.70 or higher a final step in interpreting plsm results therefore involves running one or more robustness checks to support the stability of results then the assessing reflective measurement models that is well defined right what should be the reliability values each and everything is written well in this paper then the we come to the here is uh, that's the well defined all these steps right third step fourth step and to assess how we are going to assess discriminant validity right and foreign liker uh, uh, propose the traditional metric and suggest that each constructs av should be compared to the squared interconstruct correlation so that is also well defined what should be the values of av and uh, here is assessing the formative measurement models how we are going to assess formative measurement models that is also well defined then the all these steps are here now we can see assessing structural models so you can just follow this 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 particular paper and that you could be able to understand like for example it has written when measuring a concept that is that is inherently predictable such as physical process r square value is 0.90 might be plausible similar r square values levels in a model that predicts human attitudes perception and intentions likely indicate an over fit here is all those things are uh, we can go through it and uh, now the i will come to the rmc rmse right that is root mean squared error and all these things what should be the value that should be less than 0 0.06 0.0 uh, 0.05 somewhere is the 0 0.06 so if it is more than that that means there is a problem right that is not acceptable so now we come to the robustness check also that is well defined and uh, after this uh, we will come to the this table 
you can see here refractive indicators loading internal consistency like that should be greater than 0.708. Cronbeck alpha is the lower bound. The composite reliability is the upper bound for the internal consistency reliability. And uh, minimum, what should be the minimum value that is written here as well as uh, what should be the, what you can see here, what should be the, this is the minimum value, maximum value, right? And as well as recommended is, it should be between 0 0.70 to 0 0.90. Here is convergent validity. So AV should be greater than 0 0.50. When we talk about the discriminant validity, right? For conceptually similar concept STMT, it should be less than 0 0.90, right? And uh, here is formative measurement models, convergent validity should be greater than 0 0.70 correlation. And VIF, right? Probably a critical collinearity issue when VIF should be greater than 5. And possible collinearity issue when VIF 3 to 5. And uh, that should be, VIF should be less than 3. Right, and here is the loading of greater than 0 0.50 and uh, probability that is critical collinearity VIF, uh, you can see R square, R square value of 0 0.75, 0 0.50. So what is the meaning of these values? It's the well explained here, that is R considered substantial, then moderate, 0 0.50 moderate and 0 0.25 that is weak. And uh, values of uh, 0.90 are higher and typical indicative of overfit. So value larger than 0 are meaningful. Values are Q, Q to Q square value and values higher than 0 0.025 and 0 0.50 depict small, medium and large in the predictive accuracy of the PLS path model. PLS predictive, all those things are well defined here. Model comparison, right, you can see. Here and as well as robustness check, measurement model, structure model, CTAPLS, nonlinear effect, androgeneity, each and everything you are going to going to going to uh, report as well as you have to check. And finally, the, that is the concluding observations of this particular PLSM, right? And these are the references. So I'm sure this particular research paper, that is a great contribution by the authors and uh, that would make us convenient how we have to work on PLSM and what should be reported and where we are going to accept it, right? All those things, I'm sure concepts are clear. So hopefully this video would be helpful to you. Thank you. Keep watching and you will find in my description box link of this particular paper. Stay tuned.